Hello everyone, it's Millie. And yeah, I know, it's been like, I think, two months since I uploaded. Like I said last episode, I've been getting uh, pretty busy, so it's hard for me to find time to build or even record. So I don't, I don't even have that much to show off in this episode, but I did find time here and there. And now I'm in a bit of a, I'm a little less busy, so I can record this episode. And we can show off the stuff we built. So yeah, let's go right ahead and see what I've made. So right over here, as you can notice right by the entrance, we have something new, a parking lot. So I believe this episode, this update takes place in 1920. And I think that's a suitable time to include a parking lot. I'm not too sure when cars became more mainstream use in South Africa. I think, I think 1920 is okay, but I might be a little bit early. No big deal. Yeah, we have a parking lot. So still dirt path, still showing that there's a... This is olden times, not really any paving or such just yet. Eventually we'll get there, but not quite just yet. So we have this, just a, uh, a big like kind of area the cars drive around in and then they can park in this little section over here. We have trees that will eventually grow up and provide shade. Have little wooden poles to signify that this is a place where you park, not where you drive through. You can park along this hedge here. And this is a gate to a staff area, which I'll check out in a bit. We can park along this wall and all that. I did want to try and make some vintage cars to put in this parking lot, but they didn't turn out so well. I don't know, I'm not very good at making cars, it seems. Maybe in the future I'll try, but uh, yeah, my first attempt wasn't so great. But of course, not everyone can afford a car, especially in these the early days of cars. So what the common person can do is just take a bus to the zoo and we of course have a bus stop. So we have the cool little vintage style shade structures people can sit in. We have Mr. Domez's archer chilling in here. And of course we have a whiteboard on this, uh, this, this bus stop over here just to kind of block the sun. But on this side I don't have it so even though the sun will come in, the bus will be coming down the side here. So the bus will come down there and then if you're sitting here, you're going to want to see if the bus is the bus is coming down. And if you have a big old whiteboard there, you, you won't be able to see it. So if you ever have to design a bus stop, take notes because one of the bus stops I had to wait in, they, they had decided to put a big ad on the side of here and I can't see if the bus is coming or not. And if the buses don't see people, you don't stop the bus, they'll just drive straight past. So it's a problem, I have to stand here on the side and wait to see the bus. Kind of defeats the whole purpose of this little nice city area because you, you can't, you can't hail the bus then. So yeah, if you're, just, if you're designing bus stops, just keep that in mind. Don't block people's view from seeing the bus. But on the side, it's no big deal because then the bus is coming from the opposite direction. But yeah, that's the old parking lot and the bus stop area. Eventually this road will get nice and paved out, but also it's still olden days, so it's still a dirt road. Anyway, let's go check out this this uh, staff area. Oh, by the way, I think yeah, people would park here. They would either walk out these gates or walk through the whole mid, mid section and then walk to the entrance of the zoo, which we've seen before. So I'm not going to go there. Said we'll go through the staff entrance, and yeah, we have some nice cool shaded parking area or I guess if you get unlucky you can park over there if you're one of the fancy staff members members that have a car and these buildings I'm thinking they just would be admin buildings really there's not really much uh, food storage or anything like that the food would probably be stored in the on the estate over there yeah so just zoo staff sorting out stuff can just come in or just Staff rooms taking a break. You can come in one of these rooms. I even have I think some staff buildings in This one so I think What's this trade center and this one's a keeper hut So later when I do have pavements in when the time is appropriate I can connect those up. I believe I have a staff room in here. So Yeah, just for the future I can connect those up but for now there's dirt paths and frontier didn't give us invisible pathing so can't really actually be used by staff just yet. Then we have a little gate that goes into the 
elephant area. I felt some staff rooms were important because before the only staff room I really had was this one over here. And it's just one single room and I figured since the zoo's gotten a lot bigger, you probably have a lot more people working in there, so you need more rooms for them. And this, by the way, is just the normal corrugated roof pieces that I put here. And over here I tried messing around with the new Australian stuff, which has been really cool to use. I really like these pieces, although this one is a bit, uh, a bit plasticky looking. I don't, I don't mind it too much though. Oh yeah, I also use the Australian pieces for, for the bus stop. They're really useful, these, especially these curves, these metal pieces. And we of course use them over here in a brand new aviary. Yeah, these are a bunch of, a row of owl aviaries I've built here. You have a little way the staff can come here, access there. There's doors they can use to access the aviary. But the guests will come along here. And I've made a couple cool art shaped owls to fill in these aviaries. So, yeah, I made a whole pack. It is currently up on the workshop. Link will be in the description. Let's see what we've got. So, we have all, we have all these fun owls. Yeah, all these owls are in the aviaries except the snowy owls and the melanistic barn owl. But I just wanted to put them in the pack even though I'm not going to use them. So maybe you want to use them or in the future I might use them. But yeah. So let's go take a look at our owls. First of all we have the grass owl or in Afrikaans the grass owl. Yes, Afrikaans names will be at the bottom but for some of the owls are like a great grey owl. Some of, the, some of the owls aren't found in South Africa so I didn't want to guess the Afrikaans name. I don't know if they even have an Afrikaans name so I just left the English name. Grass owls. We have some chilling in the night room area since they're nocturnal, they would be sleepy. We have our great grey owl all the way from Eurasia sitting on his big old chair. Of course, I have some little water baths in each of these so the owls can come and get a drink. We have our giant eagle owl, or they're currently known as Burroughs Eagle Owl, that's the more, I think, widely accepted name. But uh, back in the day, I think Giant Eagle Owl was the common name, so I put that down. So yeah, we have two of them, one in the tree, one sitting on these little so, what's this? A suspended uh, branch stick. We have some marsh owls. Oh, and what, what I wanted to do here is kind of replicate what you have in Johannesburg Zoo. There's always this, there's like a bunch of reeds in front of the exhibit. And there's always one marsh owl just chilling in the reeds that'll hiss at you when you come close. So you'll come in the come to this exhibit and be like, oh, where's the owl? And you'll hear this hissing. And it's like, what's that? And you look down and see the little guy chilling in the grass. And we have another one chilling on a log. And all of these, of course, have inside little night areas the owl can come sit in. What do we have? Uh, here we have a short-eared owl. This is uh, another one of the exotic owls not found in South Africa. I believe these are found in South America and Asia, maybe Europe. I'm not too sure, but they're not South African. I know that much. I don't think you get them in Africa. We have, um, have them sitting here. Next up is the Eurasian Eagle Owl. Another one of the big owls, yeah, so we've got two of the big owls, Eurasian Eagle Owl and Great Grey Owl, two of the biggest species of owls you get. Yeah, this guy, again, not a South African, not an African species, he's found in, would you believe it, Eurasia. Here we have Barn Owl, one sitting in there and another one chilling in the night room. Ah, here's the third one. And last but not least, the spotted eagle owl. So yeah, he's chilling outside, and I believe the second one, yeah, in the tree. So yeah, I'm really happy with how these aviaries turn out. Again, I use these uh, Australian metal pieces to get these nice curves, and even these long sections. And this is, these are really great, because I don't believe they're climbable, so you can nicely frame your aviaries and that stuff. Before, I would use these... Uh, what do they call these little 
thin planks like on this lemur exhibit I had these thin planks all around but the lemurs could climb them so I had to get rid of them and in the future uh, if I ever want something in this exhibit these exhibits here that can climb I'm gonna have to get rid of these uh, thin planks here because they can climb all and probably replace them with these metal pieces which I mean pretty similar in size and they're recolorable so they're really good for making aviaries and stuff like that and yeah I just got a bit of the Indian bricks on the side here you can see just a whole bunch of random logs and these little metal pieces I used to act as ropes that suspended the branches yeah so I know these are these aviaries seem a bit modern but some of the vintage aviaries I see they do look uh they can pass off as modern aviaries although I guess in modern aviaries you might have like a little piece of wood or something blocking these uh these perches to give the owls a bit more privacy and I've seen way bigger owl exhibits and especially for some of the larger owls like a great grey or a Burroughs eagle owl you'd have a uh, way bigger exhibits for some of these species realistically so I guess that's still you can kind of see the vintage aspects there and I use these uh these arches these arches are so cool these classic decorative brick arches and in case you're wondering how I got the like a wall that's only two by four meters I use these relief pieces which I've used in a lot of other places in the zoo so continue that over here and the corrugated Australia pieces because the actual corrugated piece is just too long I prefer the, the texture of this one but it's it's too long for this so I had to use the Australian ones anyway next area let's take a little walk yeah I'm not too happy with how the this area over here looks because it just looks like I put a bunch of stuff down on a grass patch and there's not really much direction that the guests would flow in I want to have like proper pathways through here so I think I'll do that next episode I just want to leave it for now because I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do but probably connect up these planters so we have actual pathways the guests can take not just a grass field that we chucked some planters and cages and a gazebo on top of then let's take a, a short walk a quick walk rather then we have a wolf exhibit that's the that's one of the new stuff we bought one of the first things I made this episode so yeah right next to the lion exhibit we have a couple grey wolves I believe three females are in here so there's one of them here's the other two and this is a recreation of an old exhibit that existed in Pretoria Zoo I'll put the picture up on screen so yeah the picture was titled the lion house Pretoria Zoo but the picture I found clearly had tigers inside and I of course decided to put wolves in them so yeah, it's divided into two sections so you can keep the wolves in one side close them off then keepers can clean the area and then open it back up for the wolves yeah it's nothing too fancy it's really just a vintage wolf exhibit they don't have much space to run around it's similar conditions to a bear and a lions and tigers carnivorans really didn't have that great exhibits back in the day got a little chain area so if we wanna take the wolves out or in we can do it in this side here and yeah oh and another thing is uh, these water water things in the reference image they had that so I put them here and then I realized I didn't have well I don't have water bowls for the lions and tigers and bears so I decided to put those in there because like with food you can just put it on the floor but water you need a little bowl so I made that there or some container similar thing on the side of the lions and if we hop over to the bears I believe yeah a little water container the bears by the way are glitched through the fence the walls because it's such a small exhibit they kind of glitch through so this guy is halfway through the wall stuck there and the other guys boxed up so. and I could I haven't been bothered to fix those I'll do that later 
Oh, I know. I forgot to show. I almost forgot about this. I have a whole more, lot more planting stuff. Because that's one thing I kind of miss. You have these vintage pictures I've seen of old South African zoos. You have open grassy areas like this, but then you also have really dense, uh, heavily planted areas. So I'm trying to incorporate that here. I have this thick, dense foliage gardens here. And eventually these will, the trees will grow up and make it a lot more shaded. Seem a lot more thicker in the foliage department. And of one last thing before we sign off, I made a popcorn stand. Yay! So yeah, people come. They want to go to the bandstand. They can. They can come and grab some popcorn and then just chill there, listen to music. So this is like a. I try to go for the proper old school vintage popcorn cart. These bicycle wheels. These are part of the in-game bicycle that I just popped there for the wheels. And these are made of, I believe, girder pieces. Yeah. Girder pieces. They have a little pot at the top, and these are flowers. This, little, this is supposed to be popcorn, and it's recolored flowers. Yeah. I think that's all I've got to show for today. See, the zoo's making some nice progress. Got our parking lot, got some more aviaries getting some more gardening in place I will do more in the future maybe get some plants along here and of course the popcorn stand and the wolves so yeah, thanks for watching I'll see you in the next episode I'll try and get it out soon I want to try and get at least I want all two episodes out in November no promises I cannot promise anything but yeah, I'll try so let's actually end on the wolves I forgot to press play so they were just standing still Thanks for watching. Check in the next one. Bye.